Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Dazzle That Tarot, and I am back again for a Tarot for Beginners Tarot reading. And today is going to be about understanding illustrations in your reading. And I'm going to include some spiritual practices you can do with your tarot cards, okay? So the question that we have here that we're going to ask the cards today is, did Tokyo Tony send explicit messages to Black China's ex? Okay, so Black China is a model. She's an influencer. She's a rapper. Um, she's the baby mother to Tyga um, and also Rob Kardashian. And she has a mom named Tokyo Tony. Tokyo Tony has bashed her daughter on the internet, you know, through the years, and they've had a rocky relationship. Recently, Black China has given her life to God, and she has done some reversal surgery as far as cosmetics, and she's been living a more cleaner, healthier lifestyle, okay? So what happened was Tokyo Tony mentioned, well, talked about Black China's ex-boyfriend on the interview, right, and said some derogatory things about him. And apparently her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, got tired of her talking mess and decided to drop some receipts of her in his inbox with explicit nude pics and her masturbating and basically bashing Black China and saying she was going to beat her ASS. And that's why she really jealous because I have a natural body and she doesn't. So they've been saying that the DMs are fake. They've been saying that it was a fake account. Tokyo Tony has been saying that the Illuminati is in TMZ and everybody set her up and she would never do that. Okay. So we're going to figure out if it's true. So let's get into it. What you guys are going to need today for this tarot for beginners tarot reading is that you're going to need your beginners tarot cards. That's the ones that we made. You know, you can, like I said, it was some where we made where so you put the keywords and the condensed meaning of the card on the back of each card so you can remember what it means upright in the reverse. We also made our own tarot deck for beginners, right? So you need those cards. You're going to need yourself some Palo Santos or some Sage. You're going to need your crystals and you're going to need your um, candles. Also, you'll need your tarot journal in a pen, all right? So before we get started, this is what you can do with your tarot cards, right? The night before or any night, right? Um, it's recharging your tarot deck with a crystal. Now, the recharger is to get that energy back up in there and get it all ready for you to do your reading. And the best way to recharge your tarot deck is under the light of the full moon. Spread out the deck on top of a cloth in the inner, in the inner windowsill. Place the deck's crystal on top of your deck and leave them out overnight to soak up the energy. This is how your deck with the crystal on top should look. It should be right in front of the window while the moon is full. And usually you can spread them out and put the crystal on top. For illustration purposes, I could not find a tarot deck that was spread it out that it look okay in front of the windowsill. So that's what we got. But you guys get the concept, right? So that's what you did the night before. And so the next day when you're ready to do this reading, your tarot deck is fully charged and it feels brand new, right? Energetically. So also what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to smudge. Smudging requires either sage or palo santos, right? So you're going to Smudge your space before, during, and after your readings or whenever needed that you feel comfortable doing so. So, and it's really cleansing the area of any negative energies or whatever the case may be. And pretty much cleansing your deck, cleansing your cloth that you're going to be using with your deck, um, with your reading, cleansing everything, right? 
So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open your doors and your windows. See, when I first started smudging, I didn't open up a window and it irritated my throat and I got the coughing. So make sure y'all open up doors and windows to let that energy out, right? And to let the smoke out. For two, like your smudge stick. Three, smudge your item, as in your tarot deck and whatever else you're going to use, in your space, okay? That's your your table, your tablecloth, or whatever you're going to use. Hey, you can smudge the candles, too, if you want to, right? Um, by wafting the smoke around it while focusing on cleansing and renewal, okay? So, and then after you finish doing so, you're going to extinguish the smudge stick. And also, some people do this, some people don't. Ring a bell or make a chiming noise by carefully clinking a spoon against a glass. Now, mind you, while I'm saying all these things, these are spiritual practices that some people do, some people don't do, people believe that you should do, um, whatever the case may be. You already know that tarot cards in itself is not magic, okay? So let's go ahead. So for your candles, you have a variety of colors. Hopefully, I'll get someone on my channel as a guest who can pretty much dive into each candle and the qualities and how to do this and how to do that. So we can do a, a bigger, further discussion on candle magic, right? So hopefully, that'll be coming up soon. So basically, with this exercise, you're going to light your candles while doing your readings, right? And... As you can see, it's different colors for different intentions because it has different meanings. So for this reading, particularly, I decided to use the blue candle, the yellow candle, the white candle, and the black candle, right? So the white candle is all about protection, healing, connection to the higher self. The black candle is all about protecting, strength, and grounding, and it repels dark magic binding, right? So also with the yellow candle, it's about enlightenment, meditation, divine wisdom, and truth. And the blue one is a calm protect protection, tranquility, attracting positive energy, right? So I wanted to include all that in my space when I do this reading, right? Because you know, a lot of people feel like when you are in a YouTube several reader online, people try to send you bad energy. People try to, you know, do some type of magic on you. So they want you to have a black candle to ward that off. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, with the white candles for protection as well. And it's about connecting to your higher self. Um, the yellow candle, again, when you want to connect to your higher self, you want some enlightenment, you want divine wisdom, you want the truth out of your tarot reading, right? And with the blue candle, it's going to be about attracting positive energy. You don't want any negative energy, right? And it's a protection candle. And it's about being calm and stuff and tranquility. You read better when you're calm and you're not on edge and your mind is everywhere, right? So those are the candles we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do with your space, okay, we have a tarot cloth, right? You can usually get those online or Amazon, and it pretty much helps you keep the space pure, you know, and you don't want no other energies coming onto your space and to keep it right there, right? So you have different candles. I have the blue, the white the yellow and the black candles. And I have that surrounding my cloth. I also have my tarot deck and I have my crystal on top of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Palo Santos and the sage and I'm going to smudge my area, right? So you're going to light the candles for protection and to clear the energy. And then you're going to clear your space by smudging with Palo Santos or sage, right? Like I said, so after that part, here's what you're going to do. Then you're going to go and get your handy dandy tarot journal. Okay, the best thing about a tarot journal, what you want to do with it is you want to make it your own. So you want to decorate it and you want to get creative with it like I did virtually, right? So this is the tarot journal by Dazzle. Ta-da! 
<laughs> so creating your own tarot journal helps you keep a record of your readings. It helps you strengthen your tarot skills, allows you to see your growth as a reader, and you can see how accurate your reading was, okay? So you're going to have your tarot journal with you. All right, so the next one is, this is what you're going to do next. You're going to then take your tarot deck, put it to the side on the cloth, and also take your crystal, take it off the tarot deck, and put that to the side on the cloth. Then you're going to say a prayer for guidance and protection, you know, for the reading. And also what you're going to do is after the prayer is that you can use Florida water, a holy water to cleanse your hands of any negative energies and to protect yourself from any negative energies, right? So after that, then we're going to go into shuffling and making your three card spread because as a beginner reader, you're only going to do three cards because it's easier, right? And you can be more focused on the three cards and their meanings, right? So the three-card spread is going to include the Ten of Wands in the reverse, the Three of Swords upright, and the Five of Pentacles upright. And the question was, again, did Tokyo Tony send explicit messages to Black China's ex? So for a better look at the cards, here they are right here. The Three, I mean the Ten of Wands in the reverse, the Ten of Swords upright, and the five of pentacles upright. So let's look into it. The pertinent past is the ten of wands in the reverse. Okay, so when we're looking at this card, we want to focus on the illustration. There is a hamster pushing a cart full of stuff. And he has all these wands on his back. And he's going down this hill. And it's like, it's too much for one. It's giving bag lady. Bag lady, you're going to miss your bus. You can't hurry up because you got too much stuff. Right? So that he's burdened by all the stuff that he has going on. So in the reverse, I would think he's going to relieve himself of all that baggage. So in the reverse keywords that you're going to have in the back of your beginning tarot deck, uh, tarot card for this card is going to have the keywords of doing it all, carrying the burden, delegation, and release. And then in your condensed meaning part of your, um, pretty much it's a cheat sheet in the back of your tarot card, right? Because you're learning. It's saying that it's a sign that you are trying to do too much by yourself and your effort to be everything to everyone. You have found yourself struggling under the weight of it all. Delegate and share the work. You don't have to do it alone and be firm in saying no to the things you know you can't take on. You may be griping, you might, you might be grappling with emotional trauma, carrying a dark secret, or dealing with increased responsibilities. However, you don't feel comfortable sharing this with others by talking about it or asking for help. In fact, you are pushing away the people who can help you. It may also be a huge relief to you when you do share some of this burden with others as they are ready and willing to support you. So someone in a pertinent past position felt burdened and they need to relieve themselves of this burden, right? Now, mind you, I'm asking, did she do this, right? And it was in the form of DMs. And it would be a secret if she did it because who, who would want their daughter to know that this is happening? But the key word here is carrying a dark secret, okay? Because that's dark, all right? So then we're going to go to this part because we got to remember the minor arcana cards have a zodiac sign to it and a modality, right? And so when we're looking at it, we're looking at the suit of wands. That's a fire energy. That's for one. So the suit of wands... The cards eight, nine, and ten are mutable signs, and they're and they're represented by a Sagittarius. Okay, so this is Sagittarius energy. This ten of wands, right? So now we know this is a Sagittarius energy. Um, this person felt overburdened by a dark secret, apparently, 
and they had to release some of that burden, right? So who knows if this person is a Sagittarius or not? So whoever had the burden might be a Sagittarius or have some type of place in it, right? So what I did was I opened up my journal and basically I went to the blank page and I dated my reading, which was January the 12th, 2024. And I did this reading at 9.20 p.m. In the title, I put tarot reading, three card pool, did Tokyo Tony send explicit messages to Black China's ex. Um, I wrote down the three cards for the three card spread that I pulled. And I put the Ten of Wands in the reverse as the pertinent past. The three of swords upright as the present, and the five of pentacles upright as the future likely outcome. Okay, so for the pertinent past, I put the ten of wands reverse is in the past position, and the zodiac sign for this card is a Sagittarius. I think someone in the pertinent past released the burden. They finally decided to delegate the burden, thus releasing the stress it may have caused them. Okay. So that's what I put for that. So now in the present position is represented by the three of swords. Now, when we look at this card, there's a double tier cake is a heart with a smaller heart. And then it's having like what three daggers in it. And then the sky is gray. And what looked like it was supposed to be beautiful. It's like most of a dark moment. Right. And it talks about being stabbed in the heart, technically. And the crazy part is that it's a double tier cake. So I feel like it's two hearts that's been stabbed here. So if we're going to look at the keywords, the keywords that's on the back of your tarot card is going to be heartbreak, emotional pain, sorrow, grief, hurt, betrayal, distance, separation, third party, right? So it has something to do with that. And then it says, when the three of swords turns up in the tarot reading, it signals that you are feeling deeply hurt and disappointed. Your heart has been pierced by the sharp blades of others, hurt, of others hurtful words, actions, and intentions. And they have inflicted intense emotional emotions of pain, sadness, grief, and heartbreak. These events are often unexpected unexpected and come out of the blue, making them even more painful. So this double tier cake was supposed to be special. You know, someone put their hard work and creativity into making this cake. It was made with love. And out of nowhere, there is these three daggers and it looks like betrayal. And three is a third party involved in that. Okay. It also talks about having emotional pain this is heartbreaking right so but it also talks about distance and separation too hmm so let's go and see what the zodiac sign is for this card so the zodiac sign and modality for this card we got to think about it as a sword so it's all about communication and how we think and it's all about air signs so Four cards in the suit, swords, the cards two, three, and four will be considered the zodiac sign Libra, and it's a cardinal sign, right? So the three of swords is a Libra energy, okay? Who is a Libra? Tokyo Tony is a Libra. That means that most likely that three of swords in the present position may very well means that this is how she's feeling or this is what she did to someone else, right? So now I'm going to put the present. The three of swords is in the present position and represents a Libra sign. A Libra may feel betrayed. They may exhibit signs of pain by yelling, screaming, and being argumentative. The pain may have been caused by a dark secret or a third party, heartbreak, grief, sorrow, and hurt. This may cause a separation in a relationship and cause distance between people. Okay, so that's what I put for that. So now we're on to the future likely outcome. The future likely outcome 
is the five of pentacles. The five of pentacles is upright. And it is, first of all, I meant to tell you guys this a while ago, but I'm actually using the tarot in Wonderland, okay, by Barbara Moore and illustrated by Eugene Smith. And with this five of pentacles, it represents Alice, right? So Alice is actually in front of a building with five pentacles at the door. So that door can be the door to prosperity, the door to financial stability, the door to community, whatever that is for that person, right? But she can't get to the door because she is actually being dragged away from the door by one of the guards that look like a frog, right? So to be dragged away from that is to be isolated from that, right? So I would think you would think that, right? Because you can't get to it. So upright on the back of your card. For the keywords, you're going to have like financial loss, poverty, lack mindset, isolation, worry, left out in the cold. Okay. And for the condensed meaning, you can put the five of pentacles as a card when upright means to lose all faith, losing resources, losing a lover mostly shows up when you've had a breakup and losing security, whether financially or emotionally or both. So Alice is losing those things that's a, that, that, that that door represents. So, and she doesn't want to leave. She's depicted, you know, where her arms like, no, like she wants to be at this door, going into this door. So it's some type of loss, some type of isolation, being left out in the cold, you know, being out there makes you have a poverty mindset in that way. So then we're going to go to the zodiac sign of this card. So each tarot card in the minor arcana suit is represented by a zodiac sign in the most high, in the modality. So pentacles is earth signs. It's all about stability, security, and wealth, right? Earth signs are what? Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. So, and they're fixed. These signs. I mean, okay, so... Mm. Let me get it right. Not all of them are fixed. Okay. Not all three signs are fixed. But for the pen, for the suit of pentacles, the card number five, six, and seven will be fixed because a Taurus is a fixed sign, right? So now we see that five of pentacles is a Taurus and it's a fixed sign. And of course, it's left out in the cold, poverty mindset financial laws, all those things. So who would represent the five of pentacles upright? Oh, Black China is a Taurus. So it's one of two things going on. It's either she's feeling this way or she's going to make someone else feel this way. Okay? So for the future likely outcome, I said because the five of pentacles is in the upright in the future position, I feel like someone will be left out in the cold. There will be financial laws, worry, and the real reality that they may find themselves isolated and cut off. The Five of Pentacles is a Taurus, which means either a Taurus will do this to someone or they themselves may feel this way. And that's what I put for the future likely outcome, right? So my answer to the question, okay, at hand. Now, this part, you're going to put how you feel intuitively Based on the cards you've pulled, based on what you know about the cards as far as keywords and the meanings of these cards, based on what the illustration is depiction is, is depicting, this is going to be your answer. And it can be different from mine because people pick up different things. So I'm going to put Black China's ex-boyfriend had been carrying a secret that was burdening him about Tokyo Tony. He decided that it no longer served him to carry the secret alone. He told the secret, and this made Tokyo Tony feel betrayed, but also hurt Black China deeply. Tokyo Tony is denying it, yelling and screaming because she knows it is true. She betrayed her daughter by wanting to send naked pictures in the hopes of having sex with him only to hurt Black China. 
This will lead to distance and separation between Black China and her mother. She will be cut off from China and for Tokyo, that is a big issue because she uses her for financial stability. It is also bad for Tokyo because she has been bashing her daughter through the years for the world to find out that she is truly the envious, jealous, vindictive, petty, money-hungry, and evil slutty one, not her daughter. So that's what I put. All right, so you might come up to a different conclusion of that, but that's what I put. So after you have put all that in your journal, you're going to go over to your table of contents, right? And you took up two pages. So on your table of contents, you already know your previous readings will Beyonce, Divorce, Jay-Z. We did that one first, right? And then we made up two fictional readings, you know, we really didn't do them, but it was just to explain what we're doing. So we just made up some two readings right here. Will I get a new job? Will Mary J. Blige get an Oscar, right? And then we actually did was Cat Williams telling the whole truth and being honest in his interview. We also did our YouTube tarot readers manipulating their readings for views and clients. Then we did Real reason for Funky Dineva departure from TGIF Fox Soul. And now we're going to put Did Tokyo Tony send explicit messages to Black China's ex? And then we're going to put how many pages it took up. So it took up page eight and page nine. So now we got to go to page nine. I'm um, page eight and nine, right? So the first page, that was the first reading. So that's going to look like that. The next page we did, that was the second and third reading, right, that we actually did, and it looked like that. That was a continuation of the third reading we did on page six, and then there was another reading on page seven that we did, right? So now we turn over to page eight, and here's our most recent reading. It's going to look like that in your tarot journal, and make sure you guys number the pages so you can go right to your reading okay so thank you guys so much i hope you guys learned a lot from this video um i said a lot <laughs> hopefully i covered everything you guys was probably wanting to know and i'll see you guys next time so this was dazzle that tarot please like comment and subscribe and book your private reading and thank you for watching